Good morning, folks. Quick note here on the solar pole flip. You see where one pole seems to have flipped at the end of last year, and indeed both magnetics are on the opposite side of the baseline compared to last cycle. But that red curve might jump up again across the baseline, so we don't yet officially call these poles flipped. The flip is in progress. Folks, these are the first shots of next level cosmic ray detector chamber experiments from Mr. Two Tough Two. Uranium in the chamber protective magnetic fields against the cosmic rays, and a ton of other stuff coming in the next few weeks. Switching to ISON, where you'll get some brief shots here of Francis Walsh's latest pictures. When I talk about the experts in our online community, not NASA's or some government, those ones you should really be listening to instead of some YouTube fool claiming things a child knows isn't true, this would be one of them. Francis shows us technique and visuals of the cosmos we can't readily get ourselves. But most importantly, both he and Bruce Gary's latest, including his posting of Whitmer image, shows an intact comet nucleus to ISON. Not really any major fracturing, and the chances for the mid-January meteor shower to be dangerous are disappearing fast. Feel sad? Go outside now when it's dark and see the draconids finishing up. Look at the Philippines. We have another tropical storm heading in this direction from the east. At the same latitude in the North Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal near Sumatra is watching the back end of development heading for the Indian subcontinent. Tropical development in the Atlantic is worth keeping an eye on later this week as it treks west. Meanwhile, we have NARDA and a developer in the East Pacific. Most that pop off just off Mexico take this track and somehow two of the computer models see the developed storm doing something completely different. And then there's the space weather. The return of flaring, 24 plus hours of eruptive behavior still ongoing, and the CME we've been expected smacked our magnetosphere yesterday, a day earlier than expected, and jacked the speed, density, and plasma temperature up significantly. We are geomagnetic storm conditions, likely go off and on throughout the day. Magnetic shield will be sore tomorrow after that one. Proton shock wiped the electron flux clean, but at least the high energy influx levels are stable. We had our sun diving comet yesterday come in. Unfortunately, we don't yet have the pictures of disintegration, but we do know that a well-timed solar awakening is to be had in its wake. Yesterday we began showing this eruptive behavior and folks, it hasn't stopped. As if all the flareless CMEs and filament eruptions weren't filling up nearby space with plasma, we also have a return of solar flaring from the incoming delta spot that we put on alert in last night's news. An M2 blast emanated from this large umbral group that we now have a terrific view of. Look at the umbras within that penumbra. Now, look at the magnetic mixing. There's no such thing as a double delta, but if there were, this fits the bit. Along with this group up here actually, got the magnetics it needs to be delta, just need some more umbral power. And speaking of power, the coronal hole coming to be Earth facing tonight is the most powerful on the Sun. This has been highly fluid, so of course it could change by the hour, but if it doesn't, the next quake uptick should be at hand after this little brief 36 hour lull. Like I said, this eruptive event is not over yet, especially on the southeastern limb incoming. Millions of miles of electromagnetic chain reaction destabilization of the solar surface, and the show is not over yet. Use the links. You're really all you need. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.